Hello everybody, this is Mystic Jen. I plan on have, making this a quick video. I want to give a brief introduction to witchcraft, especially in the area of manifestation and casting spells. Okay, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the idea that you have to have all these special oils and all these special herbs, okay, and all this equipment to make a spell work. The theory behind all this stuff is a sacrifice. I am a soul practitioner. Uh, um, I am a witch. I am a soul practitioner. I am not in any kind of coven at the moment. Um, that's what a soul practitioner is. Somebody who's not in the coven who practice their craft on their own. Okay? Casting a spell. The whole purpose of all these herbs and stuff is intent. It kind of helps focus the energy. Now, with that said, what helps me focus my energy into whatever spell I cast are candles okay I then go towards candles and tarot cards okay I'll pick out certain tarot cards out of a deck I have actually a special deck that I do most of my spell casting from which is called spellcasters tarot okay um, now I don't have the boxes anymore because they took up too much space but um, I also have, it depends on what spell I'm casting. Sometimes I'll use my um, ah, the witch's tarot, okay? But I will bring out the book for Spellcaster's Tarot. That I can sh actually show you. Okay. Okay, this is the handbook for the Spellcaster's Tarot. And I'll bring up a card, for instance. Like, this is, we'll say the Six of Cups. So it's, it's kind of funny, this is the page I turn to, the Six of Cups. Maybe somebody's wishing for... Uh, a return lovers maybe somebody wants somebody to contact them I this is like an ethic issue it depends on your personal ethics you don't really want to put, put a spell on someone against their will okay you could cast the intent of if this person thinks about me may them contact me okay but you don't want to, if they're not thinking about you and you don't even give you a second thought and there's no connection there, you don't want to force your magic on them. But the, what I like about the Spellcaster's Tarot, each card has a magic use. Like for the Six of Cups, it is used in spells to reconnect with someone or some, well, something on something oops that is an or i'm sorry you have to apologize i had drops put in my eyes today because i had an eye exam and my vision's still a little bit blurry something or someone from the past to recover something lost or stolen or represent deep rooted connections friendships ancestors and ties to your past okay now, I have used that, I've actually used that card to connect with my grandmother. She is in my past. She is like, I guess, technically considered like an ancestor. 
she's passed away. She's in the other, on the other side. My cousin Daryl, you know, even ones I have not, never met, but just say. Anyhow, that is, this is my, that is my favorite deck to, for spell casting. Okay? Um... Now, let me check one thing in here. Just bear with me. Just want to go to the wands. Okay. Yes, this is it. Okay. This is the deck. This is my Spellcaster's Tarot deck. Okay. Yeah, there's reversals and stuff because I do readings with this as well. Okay, this is the backs. Uh, my camera angle's a little bit off because I have my camera right in front of me. Uh, maybe if I turn this a little bit, I'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, so I can see what I'm doing. But this is my um, Spellcaster's Tarot. I use typically, like I said, I use this mostly and it depends what kind of spell I'm casting. Um, it, this is a focal point. I generally light a candle. And that's what these, these are called charm or spell candles. I get these on Amazon. I actually have two packs because, you know, uh, I'm not going to give out what I use my black candles for. But one of the uses for black candles, obviously, yes, is black magic, hexes, stuff like that. Um, another use is getting rid of negative energy. Um, I've used that to get rid of negative influences. And I have also, sometimes I'll, use, I'll typically burn a black candle with a white candle for the yin and yang, Mas um, the divine masculine and divine feminine. Get rid of negative energy and replace it with light, with white, okay? Uh, and if, or I could use a single candle, which is a gray one. The gray candles is a combination of white and black. Um, uh, th th I know this is supposed to be an introductory, but I'm just giving you an overview. I'm going to start a series on spell casting the easy way without all the fancy stuff. Um, am I guilty of using herbs? Sure. I've got lemon peel, but it's upstairs because I was actually using it in cooking. The lemon peel is something you don't want to use heavily it's, it's what it's one you want to take use very very lightly because lemon peel can create conflicts okay just saying um, I have not actually used the actual lemon peel in a spell yet um, because it, it has a very heavy dark energy tone to it um, it's like put for putting a sour taste in somebody's mouth, basically. Um, but basil, I use this a lot. You can use the fresh. Um, this is like in between fresh and dry. It's like, I don't know. But I use basil. This is for abundance. This is for money. I have my cauldron over here. And I'll sprinkle it in my cauldron or if I'm using paper to close my spell. Like I'll write, write my spell down on a piece of paper and burn it in the candle in my cauldron. Um, I might put some basil in the paper when I fold it up, when I go and burn it, okay? This worked very well for me. It's not necessary. It was just one added step that I chose personally to take. It's not necessary. You don't need all these herbs. Uh, there's some herbs, there's all these different roots and stuff that other witches call for. Not, you have, mainly have to, almost have to order them online. And when you're a broke witch like me, um, you have to use what you can get your hands on. But I happen to know for a fact, basil is excellent for abundance, just saying. 
and it's not expensive. Um, but I will choose the appropriate color candle. Um, oh, I do have a green one left. I I used a green candle the last time. I, a story here is that I needed five hundred dollars. It was for paying some bills, and I was short. Everything from my cell phone bill, car insurance, you know, shit that I needed. And I'm like, I need the money. I've got part of it. I don't have all of it. And I cast a spell using the green candle. I used my basil. And I tell you what, I, within just a couple days, I had all the money that I needed to pay my bills. Okay. Um... You want to educate yourself before you dive into casting spells. There are certain times a year for certain, or certain times, certain moon phases for certain spells. Timing, yes. I do believe in timing. Um, you could cast any spell at any particular time. But sometimes if you, a certain moon phase, a certain day of the week, a certain time of the day, morning, afternoon, night, um, it doesn't change a spell. It just adds some energy to it. Okay? And there are some spells that are fast moving. Some are slow moving. Okay? And pretty much what you put into it is what you get out. You, you could have Witch A over here who has all these different roots and all this, you know. So she's burning these herbs and stuff. She's putting a lot. She's putting effort in it. But where's her mindset? Okay. It's all in the intent and how you concentrate, how you focus. It's all in the mind, all in the focus of your mind and in spirit. Connecting to spirit and manifesting. That's all that a spell is, is manifestation. Pretty much. The Christians call it a prayer. You have your Catholics with their incense, you know. Um... And there's songs that they sing and well, their chants or whatever you want to call them. That's their way of concentrating their energy in the manifesting something. They call it prayer. It's, it's the same exact thing as a spell or manifestation. There's spells are more. It's like more mechanical than a manifestation, lighting a candle, doing this, doing that, or writing something on a piece of paper and burning it. Or You can actually just sit and just meditate and say a certain spell over and over again. And it could say have the same effect as somebody sitting there with a candle, with several candles, herbs, whatever, oils and it sprays and everything um, and have the same effect so this is on um, spell casting um, I plan on doing a bunch of different Wicca based videos I don't know how often I'm going to put these out but I am finding that there's a lot of young witches out there. I've seen them asking questions, not understanding, and that that's the dangerous part. I, I am seeing young witches, new witches, and when I say young witches, I'm not talking about just teenagers. Of course, there's a lot of teenage witches out there that don't know what the fuck they're doing when it comes to spell casting. You do have to know what you're doing, okay? You have to know how to word your spells. And... You could use borrowed spells. That works. I write my own. I started out looking up spells on the internet. And finding this herb, that herb, this saying, that chime, this, do this, this. And I'd follow them. Yeah, they would work. But when I started writing my own, that's when my real magic started to take place. And I cast one for intuition and stuff. And what started happening to me, my crystal ball here, 
I'm actually starting to see images in it. I can actually gaze into a crystal ball now and see images. You know, so I want to get a bigger one, but this one will always be on my table because it's very special to me. It's my first crystal ball. I've had it for 15 or 20 years. You know, never used it for, for scrying. But that's just one example. I, oh, I gave you a couple examples. I gave you the example of my manifestation when I needed $500 for bills. Um, and these charm candles are very cheap. Um, you can use a votive. Um, but those are my two, my three main tools. Really. Candles, a deck of cards, and a piece of paper and a pen. Um, the other things are about atmosphere. Okay, obviously. Sometimes I'll play some soft music. Meditation music. Um, light incense. I've got my incense burner here. Sometimes I'll light incense. I use this daily, actually. Okay? I burn incense every single day. And it really adds to my concentration. It adds to the energy in my space. Um, you can see where I've done some spell work here because there's a little bit of ashes left. I tried to get most of them out. Okay. But, and here's a spell candle here that I need to get out. And that's a candle that I burned. It's a purple candle for intuition and psychic abilities. That's why I burned it. Um, you want to be stalked on sage. I use sage for smudging. When I'm doing spell work, and when I'm done with my spell and I cast it out into the universe, I light my sage. I got two in my cauldron right now. This one I've been using a lot because of a friend. And I feel like it. That may, that is something in itself. A friend of mine gave me this bundle of sage. She grows it. And so I've been using this to smudge my areas. Okay. Um, you do want to do so, have some way of clearing. I will get in more detail about the smudging and clean, cleansing your space and starting and the rituals and the timings of them in later videos. Okay. But I, this, the goal here was just a brief introduction. I wanted you to understand the basis and a few tips. And what I use is my main tools. Um, and like I said, atmosphere. Typically my uh, main light in my room, I will turn it off. Okay. Um, I will turn it off and I will mainly have the lights on my table. Uh, these candles need replaced. I just use tea lights in there. <coughs> but I'll turn it off. Just like that. Okay. I have my salt lamp go. I usually have my salt lamp. I haven't had it in recent times. <coughs> because I actually needed light bulbs for it. And I finally found the light bulbs. Okay, and um, I'll have my candles going. I still have a, a, a table lamp over here. Since I mentioned this, I'm going to go ahead and place my candles. I know I could probably use photos in here. I've used photos before, but probably photos in these candles is. They're almost too high, but and I got these tea lights 
at Dollar Tree for a dollar. Uh, I think the other thing I should mention, if you're going to burn paper, okay, or if you're going to, you know, if you're, yeah, especially if you're, if you're going to burn paper and herbs, you want a fireproof, heat-resistant container, okay? You want a cauldron or something like that. You don't have to go online and buy a $30 cauldron. I didn't. Um, my cauldron on my table. Okay? This. I paid a dollar at Dollar Tree. And the sand. I used black sand for absorbing negative energy. Um, and I change it every so often. The sand costs a dollar. Okay? At Dollar Tree. And I took a Sharpie and I put my um, pe um, pentagram on there. The other side um, actually has symbol of the, the th triple goddess symbol on it. I didn't do that great of a job on it. But I have both symbols on my cauldron. That's my homemade cauldron. Cost me one, cost me two dollars. So you can get started in witchcraft very um, inexpensive. Okay. I have a few extra tools because I've been in it, at it for a while. I've got crystals that sometimes I'll use to concentrate energy. Um, like my rose quartz for love, romance, you know, just an example. Um, so... That's about all that I have right now. Um, you do want to study it first. You do want to study witchcraft before you get into it. Oh, rune stones. Um, I'm going to be covering all this. I, I know I keep adding on to this video. I keep mentioning things. Runes. Okay. Runic symbols. You know, they're, they're props, basically. Props for concentration, okay? Um, but I guess the most important part is candle safety also. And like I said, make sure you have something uh, fireproof if you're going to be burning paper or burning herbs, okay? Um, but this is all some advanced techniques that I'll be covering in later videos. And uh, I want to show you one other thing, what my room looks like. I don't have my music playing, but when I'm, when I'm casting spells, this is what I see. This is it, my light that's on my table. I have my candles. I just added the colored lights. Those are going to be replaced eventually when I get white lights. But that's what I had. I used what I had. I didn't go out and spend any more money. You know, I got started. I had my table set up. Some things I've bought over the years, but, you know, the initial witch, witchy stuff, I spent under $10. I really did. Under 10 bucks. So, feel free um, to ask any questions. Okay? Uh, leave comments below. Please, if there's a certain thing with witchcraft or Wicca that you would like a video on or, or like to talk, or me to talk about, leave the idea in the comments of this video. And I'm going to start working. I think at least once a week I'm going to put out some kind of witchy, whoo, some kind of witchy poo video. Okay? So, until next time. I'll see you later.